five, four, really? three, two, <laughs> two. Are we live? Are we on? We are on. Hi, everybody. Can I be here, too? Well, I hope you are. Oh, okay. So, welcome to Christina's Kitchen. Uh, our very first cooking class Facebook Live where we have an empty restaurant. So you guys online. It's not empty, you're here. Well, well you're here too, right? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are online are the rest of our audience. And uh, so because I don't like talking to cameras, I'm going to talk to Daniel instead. And I just hope you can hear me. But I'm, I'm an introvert, so I might stop talking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll just talk to you, right? Is that okay? You can talk to those girls behind the cameras over there. Wait, you're more interesting. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> what we are making today is Asian food. Yeah. Now, do you remember what we experimented with yeah. a couple weeks ago? That, that was pretty good. That was really good. So, so I came up with this crazy idea that I wanted to make a recipe for fried rice that wasn't fried. Now, that's like having bread that isn't bread. Or, <laughs> but then again, that's Christina, so she'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, first of all, I went on the internet and I looked at all kinds of recipes for fried rice. Seriously, like for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So then uh, I came home from work one evening and uh, I was like, guess what? We're gonna invent a new recipe tonight. You remember that? Tell me something else I don't know. <laughs> Be nice. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, we came, I came home and you helped me chop like a whole bunch of vegetables. Yes, I remember that. You remember that? <laughs> yes, I remember that. So what we did the first I'm night I'm afraid was- you're gonna make me chop them again. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so the first night, uh, we actually made an actual fried rice that was actually right? fried, like yeah, a normal that's fried rice. That's pretty of course, good. it tasted great, but it's not necessarily the most healthy. That's pretty good, though. So the next night, we made an unfried one. I thought it was the same thing. Yeah, because you couldn't tell the difference. It looked like, it looked like the same thing. Tasted the same. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to do the healthy version. Uh, we made it, what, three or four times before we finally got it the way we liked it? I don't know. You made it. You were the one that told me how to tweak it. Oh, I did, I did, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I've been thinking about coronavirus this day, so I just need to know. Don't mention that. that. <laughs> we're in a cooking class. Oh, I'm sorry. Did <laughs> you wash your hands? I did, you want me to go wash them again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while he's washing his hands, uh, we are going to be making unfried rice today, and you'll see that we have a number of different things here. One of which uh, is a hot plate, because I don't have a stove here. Uh, and I also have uh, a stainless steel pot. And we also have, can they, is this visible? Yeah. I'm not sure if it is. Is it visible, the oh. other one? Um, we also have, this is an electric wok. Uh, it's a nonstick electric wok. It's an old one that I had at home. Um, and that's just another thing that you can use to make this recipe. So you basically need either a good uh, stainless steel pot with a nice thick bottom, or you need some kind of wok of some sort, whether it be a stovetop one or an electric skillet one. Um, and... No, I wash my hands. Did you wash your hands? Of course. You wanna wash them again? Sure, you gonna talk now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, so I guess, are we chopping, chopping vegetables or? Let's see, recipe. Be sure and wash them good, like like I did. <laughs> I, I really don't even want, know what we're talking about. Why did I send her out to wash her hands? Can you tell me what we're talking about? Um, oh, we're talking about the wok and then the the, oh, the yeah, stuff yeah. that the, oh, the yeah, equipment, yeah. the equipment. Oh, all the equipment. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this uh, fancy small wok. I'm gonna let you teach because I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, if we're making this uh, unfried rice, 
And I promise after the class is uh, done live, we will actually post the recipe so you can follow along. Um, but the first thing we want to do is actually make our egg for the fried rice. Because uh, I don't put egg in it. Uh, we're going to do eggs. scrambled tofu. Yeah, I have to have the chicken to make egg. Uh, but we aren't eating chickens today. We're no. eating vegetables. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So we're going to uh, make our scrambled tofu first. And if you want to see our scrambled tofu recipe, it's on our website. It will also be posted later on our actual recipes. This is my sink. I'm draining the water out of the tofu. And we're going to fly through our recipes today because we don't have a lot of time. So my tofu, are you going to rinse it for me? Yeah, please. Please, that would be marvelous. We drain the water out of it. Then I smell it. It smells like beans. It doesn't okay. sound like it smells like manure, so we're okay. Give me the that. water. Because if tofu is rotten, it will smell like manure. It really <coughs> okay, will. Right. So moving on to the next point. <laughs> Good to know. We're gonna we're gonna break up this uh, tofu into chunks that we're gonna scramble. And uh, obviously, I'm not worried about what shape it's in. I just want to make sure that it's broken. Uh, I don't want it in tiny, tiny little pieces, although if you really like it that way, you can. I like texture in my tofu. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I'm breaking this up, Daniel's going to help me put some of these ingredients in here. So the first thing I need is a teaspoon of salt. And the salt, all the ingredients are on that tray right today. there. All right. So Obviously, we didn't rehearse this ahead of time. So. No, that's why it's so fun. The salt. It says a salt, salt demo on the lid. It all said pimentos. I don't want to say some notes. It's true. It does. <laughs> okay, how much salt? One teaspoon. All right. Don't go heapy. Like, just nice level teaspoon. Well, that was scant. Yeah, that's level. <laughs> all right. Three, three more, three more grains. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the next thing well, we need... you can like dump it in, so I figured... We need a teaspoon... We actually are accurate, believe it or not. We need right. a teaspoon of onion powder. All right. Make sure it's nice and lovely. You're going to need me a knife to like scrape these off, you know? No, you I don't need a knife. <laughs> Someone on the lob said that they wish that they could taste it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wish you could too, but if you live in Macquarie County, we're actually going to make this tomorrow as our entree. So you can come and get it to go tomorrow. If you live in Pulaski County in the Somerset area, we're actually going to be doing it on our delivery route on Thursday. So you can try it that way. And if you don't live in those places, well, you need to come visit us. <laughs> or get the recipe, which we will be posting on a comment on the Facebook Live and uh, when, we're, when we're done here. So uh, you can make it at home and you can taste it that way. So that's kind of the whole point of doing the class, so that you can actually Make, make it, it at home. Make it an yeah. Alright, so, I'm turning this on, but I need a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Garlic powder, let's go. Um, can you, you get me, me some a half a teaspoon and a whole teaspoon? Some Is that okay? Yeah, turmeric. Well, if we're okay not being exactly precise. <laughs> well, you should know what a half is. Yeah, that's good. Oh, uh, what do you know? Good job. Got it. He does know how to cook more than he says he does. Maybe. With supervision. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> there is a little thing in there with some liquid in it. Lemon. That is my lemon juice and uh, yeah. the optional sesame. <laughs> That's all right. I can do I can do it with what I got. Okay. So we're gonna put that in it. That's a teaspoon of lemon juice and a half teaspoon of sesame oil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, and this is a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Give us one for that. Yeah, right there. You hit me a little one. All right there. Thank you. And where did we put that little bowl that was here? It's on the other side. All right. You want to rinse it out and bring it back? I rinsed it out. Already. Oh, you did. Wow. I'm a step ahead of you, actually. For what? That's my sink. Okay. You know, usually in the kitchen you have a kitchen sink with you, but here we go. <laughs> so while this cooks. And it's going to take about five minutes to cook. We're going to start chopping vegetables for our unfried rice. So I'm going to turn this down. Now that it's boiling nicely, we're just going to turn it down to low and let it simmer for a little bit. So what's the first vegetables we need? Daniel? Are you paying attention? 
I'm paying attention. Okay. I'm looking here. When you're right. ready, there's Here's a question from Patty. There's a question from Patty. Patty, yes. what's your question? How many servings will this make? How many servings will this make? Uh, we're going to use um, one quart of rice, and uh, we're going to use some vegetables. So it's going to make about two quarts, probably. Um, so if you have a family of big eaters, that's like that would feed like four people if they eat two cups each. If you're one cup each, it would be eight people. Um, or you can put it in the fridge. It tastes good the next day. OK, so we're going to do a cup of carrots and one half of a medium onion. Is this a medium onion or a large onion? That is a large onion, but we're going to just do half of a large onion. How's that? Actually, that's not a large onion. A large onion is one of those big uh, it looks sweet large to onions. Me. <laughs> so we're going to do half of that. This is All my right. compost sink now. That's your compost bucket now. All right. I have one carrot already peeled, so you can start cutting it. I'll try to start on that. Do you want to show them how to cut it? Do you remember how to cut it? Yeah, I think so. Quarter inch dices. All right. Dice is not rounds, so I throw that one away. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to do it lengthwise so that we don't have such big round pieces. Get my thumb out of the way. Hopefully, this would be not very great if I cut myself on live camera. <laughs> but hopefully, we have first aid here in case that happens. We have a nurse. Okay. I still want to put myself on my camera. Okay, so it looks like that, <laughs> something like that anyway. So now, just take this and... Can you bring that closer and zoom it in again? Yeah, maybe set it up here or, or bring, the, bring the camera up a little bit. However, we need. We've got a couple cameras going here. One for backup, I guess. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. Oh, it does. While you do that, I'm going to peel this onion over here. It says one cup of carrots. You may not need all three of these. You can put as many carrots in there as you want. Like, if you like lots of carrots in, you can put uh, up to two cups in. If you don't like carrots at all, put like a quarter cup in, you know, like one small carrot. We'll measure it after he's done cutting two carrots. There's a comment from Victoria. I cringe at Daniel cutting the carrots. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Maybe uh, I should help him. Yeah, Maybe I'll help I, you. I'm cringing too. I'm not sure, <laughs> sure I like this method, but if you keep your fingers from the from the cutting edge, that's kind of the idea. Sometimes easier said than done, but anyway, that's the theory. Nice. Daniel actually helps me chop vegetables a lot at home, so he's a he's very good at keeping my knives sharp and using them. In fact. When it comes to chopping an onion, he's the one who taught me how to chop an onion in the first place. I thought I knew until I married him. See, I'm good for something. <laughs> so while he's chopping the carrots, I'm going to chop the onion over here. Which I should do it the other way around because he's better at onion than I am. You ready to cry? <laughs> <laughs> So we're chopping the carrots and the onion in very small dices, small pieces. You can pinch through that as well. Okay, zoomed. There you go. <laughs> Wait a minute. You think you have a lot of here? I'm, I'm going to guess that's more than that. Just those two. Let's see. Yeah, looks like we're at a cup and a half. We'll use it all anyway. It don't matter. Well, you said you're going to use the whole onion, so I'm using half the onion. There's my onion here. The, the to, uh, tofu is done now. I'm shutting it off. I'll let you uh, yeah. see what happens. 
see what it looks like. Daniel, yeah. you want to take it all the way up there? Looks like. Give him a nice close up view. Looks pretty good. Can you see that there? All right, make everyone hungry. That's the whole idea. Make you, make you super hungry. Let me give you this like super hungry. All right, so just because it's easier, I'm gonna use the wok instead of the hot plate for the next recipe. We're gonna set this aside to cool. I think Lexi, we need a hot pad. Set it inside here. Yeah, that's fine. So she brings a hot pad. So I have my wok. Uh, the, the definition of a wok basically is a pot that has a narrow bottom and kind of slanted sides. Um, and the nice thing about a wok is that you can cook some things at a high heat, but it doesn't stick as bad because you can kind of shove them off to the side. Um, but if you don't have a wok, like I said, I've made the same recipe in this flat bottom stainless steel pot and it worked just fine. Um, so, where did I just put this recipe? Here we go. Um, so, so the first thing... Start off with some rice. The first thing we did is we pre-cooked our rice. We want one quart of brown rice that's been already cooked and it's great because you can use leftover cold rice. In yeah. fact, it works best with cold rice. It doesn't, it's not new after you make it. Uh, sir. But uh, <laughs> who likes leftover gold rice, right? But so if you actually are making fresh rice, you need to make sure that you make it ahead so it can cool at least four hours before you make the fried rice recipe. Mm. Uh, if you try and make it with fresh cooked rice that hasn't cooled, it's going to turn into a sticky, gooey mess in the bottom of your pot. The only reason that I know is because I tried it. So I tried about everything. The only reason I know anything is I made all the mistakes. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, so we have our cooked rice that was chilled in the fridge. Um, I like to seal it in jars because it keeps it fresher. And uh, we've done our tofu. So now, and we've done the carrots and the onion. So I'm going to get uh, the carrots cooking because the carrots are supposed to steam three to four minutes uh, before we add so anything else. So there's literally nothing in the right now not completely dry. So we're putting the carrots in. I'm gonna turn it on high. Uh, and we're gonna put as soon as that warms up and I hear it sizzling, we're gonna add a little water to that. Um, There's a comment from Lurie Colburn. She said the kids are super excited that Daniel is helping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See you guys can work in the kitchen too, right? I'm wearing a green apron. <laughs> So, while this is warming up, we still need a minced garlic. We need a tablespoon of minced garlic. We have a mincer over there on the tray, and I'll let you do the honors. Uh, you can mince it into one of our little containers here. All right. It doesn't so, have to be exactly a tablespoon, just approximately. So you want me to just go ahead and mince all those? Yeah, just we have like like half a dozen cloves or something? Yeah, it usually takes about three to five cloves. Um, I can hear the sizzling now, so I'm out of a little water. Christina has a pretty nice garlic press, too. I've tried the plastic ones, and the handles break off before you get your garlic through it. I'm going to put this but lid on this so it steams. This one's pretty nice. If you all remind me, I'll put a link to where we bought it. Carrots take a long time to cook. If you want to speed up this process of the recipe, you can use the bags of frozen peas and carrots. And if you do that, then you add them at you add the carrots and peas at the end when you when we're adding the peas because we're have peas in this anyway. Um, but since I don't have the frozen peas and carrots, I just have frozen peas. Uh, we're going to use fresh carrots, so we put them in first to get started. Uh, but if we did this in the summertime. We could use fresh peas as well. In the spring, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, there's some peas in the garden. Okay, what happens in oh, oh, this recipe? I don't know what I'm doing now. Um, we need some mushrooms. I think we have, yes, we have a can of mushrooms over here. Can you reach it? And uh, my sink is filled with compost now. So we're going to make another sink. 
Mushrooms are optional. I know some people don't like them and other people love them. So if you're one of those that doesn't like them, you can leave them out. There's nothing that says you have to have a mushroom in there. In fact, all of these ingredients, except I don't recommend leaving out the onion or the garlic because that's kind of the flavor. And you can't but, really leave out the rice that has to have fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> but all the other ingredients, like the vegetables, like the scrambled tofu or anything else, you can leave it out. You can substitute it. Um, the joke with fried rice is that it's, it's a refrigerator recipe. You know, you open the fridge and anything you have left over in there, you just throw it in. Ew. Well, not if it's spoiled. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, you got little bits, like little bits of, you know, cooked carrots or little bits of, of uh, other kinds of grains or vegetables or whatever. You know, you can throw it in and make a really nice dish. It's a good thing she doesn't tell me this recipe before she makes it, she, before I eat the dish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never done that to you. <laughs> but yes, don't put it in if it's moldy. That's kind of nasty. So if you like big chunks of mushrooms, you can leave them big. Otherwise, you can chop the mushrooms up a little bit. Um, so whatever your preference is. So there's our mushrooms. What else do we need? Um, frozen beets. Oh, we need to look ahead at what else we're going to need. Let me see how that. I think we're going to need some... Coconut milk. So looking further ahead, we have coconut cream on our recipe, but I don't actually buy coconut cream. I buy the Thai Kitchen coconut milk. You can find it at Kroger or Aldi or any of those places. Um, and I put it in the refrigerator for a couple hours beforehand, and then uh, just open the can and scoop the hard cream off the top. And we're just going to use a little bit of that instead of our oil. That's what's going to keep it from sticking. So, Daniel, I'll let you open that up. I think I need a little more water in my carrots. Did you say you keep this in the refrigerator? I just put it in the fridge for a little bit to oh, harden. Okay. To harden it. No, you don't store canned stuff in the fridge on a regular basis. But it helps separate the cream. How long have these carrots been in here, do you know? I don't know. Put it up there. Three, Not three minutes? Okay, well that's what it's supposed to be. So it feels like they're starting to old top, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the onion. Alright. That actually looks pretty nice. It's, it's all hard. I can see that. I can probably see that. I don't want to tip it too far because I'm not for sure how hard it is. I'm quite yeah, sure it's very hard. We're not gonna put it in yet, so just right. leave it there. Right. <laughs> I'm just getting making sure I have all the ingredients ready. Uh, the next one we're going to have to work on is our ginger. And I don't think I've ever done fresh ginger before in a cooking class. Um, you, that's hot. That's hot. No. Any of that? You can use um, dried ginger powder in this recipe, but it doesn't taste near as good. Um, I tried it the first time with powder, and then I did fresh, and fresh tastes so much better. <laughs> So this is fresh ginger root. Uh, Looks like an animal. An animal? You sure it's not an animal? It's not moving. <laughs> Looks like it had eyes. <laughs> it looks like a potato that grew like feet or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Toes? <laughs> Whatever. So we need a half a teaspoon of ginger. Uh, so we're going to cut off a chunk of ginger off of this. And you want to keep this stored in the refrigerator so it doesn't uh, spoil. Um, so I usually just keep it in a bag or a Ziploc bag or some kind of bag and just keep it in the fridge so it stays moist. Uh, and I'm going to just very carefully peel it. And then, Daniel, can you give me the grater? We have a little uh, grater. That is the best way to shred ginger of anything that we've tried. There's all kinds of different things you can use. You can use them. No, that is not to shave off your calluses. <laughs> <laughs> and don't use it on your feet. Well, you just said this looks like toes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'll show you how it works in a second. Why don't I get all this uh, peeling off of this ginger here? I think you just about got it. Oh, it smells so good. There we go. <laughs> Alright, what should I 
receive it into. That's your sink. I know. You, you want to dump the water out of the sink and rinse it, and then I'll use it? Or maybe I can shoot it into it. No, I don't want to do that either. Oh, wait, I'm bringing the sink back. Already went. Right here. So this little thing is actually a shredder. There's other kinds of shredders. There's those little bitty, um, tiny, like, they look like tiny uh, carrot shredders. They're called garlic mincers that you can shred them with. That works great for this. Um, you can use a zester. Um, but this, of all the things we've tried, this is definitely our favorite because it shreds so nicely and so easy. Just goes right through it. It's not burning, right? <laughs> well, don't do that. Another question. Patty, yes. Patty Stonewall asked, how long will the ginger stay good in the refrigerator? Uh, what would you say, Mama? Mom? Depends it depends on how fresh the ginger is. Usually, it keeps for a month. You'll know it's going bad because it'll start growing mold. Yeah, um, but uh, if you're worried, you can also cut it in chunks and put it in the freezer, and it'll keep longer that way. Or you can just buy a smaller chunk at, at Kroger when you buy it. It's not outrageously expensive either. No, it's like three dollars a pound. Yeah. And you don't use very much of it, so. <laughs> okay, how much do I need a half teaspoon? I think I have a half teaspoon now. All right, where is my teaspoon at? It's going to come up almost exact. I like that. About a half teaspoon. Half teaspoon, all nice and grated. Okay, I smell. It smells like it's running out of water. Oh, it smells good. So you don't have any oil in there, just water and vegetables. Yep. And if I don't put some more water in, they're going to be burnt vegetables. Just give me a little bit, like a tablespoon.
you. everyone can smell it too. Yes. <laughs> I can smell it. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to stir this up until the rice is warm. And we'll know the rice is warm when the rice starts getting soft and not hard as a rock. I'm just breaking up these clumps of rice as I'm stirring it in. But tell me, Daniel, what else is going to go in here after this is warm? Okay, so it's the fold and... Let's see, add remaining seasonings to taste and gently fold in peas, mushrooms. Oh, seasonings. Well, we need a flavor this thing, don't we? Well, you already put onion and What salt are we missing for seasonings? So, seasonings. Victoria says, <laughs> smells good over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for seasoning, we are using coconut aminos and tamari. Uh, so, the coconut aminos, <laughs> I can get it open here. It's kind of like a soy sauce, but it's made from the sap of the coconut palm tree. And uh, if you can't find a place to get it, we can get it for you here. But uh, that's what it looks like. It's like a low sodium soy sauce with no soy in it. Um, so if you have any sensitivity to soy, this would be the most perfect thing to get. So we're going to use mostly this to season it, and it's seasoned to taste. Like, you don't have to actually measure it. Um, but they can't taste it. Well, when they make it themselves, they can. All right. We're just going to put a little bit on here. And stir that in. And then for the tamari, tamari is actually a, a type of soy sauce. It's super concentrated. Um, I don't put very much in at all. I just put a couple drops just for some extra flavor. If you're trying to do it soy free, you would obviously leave the tofu out and you would leave this out. All right, now the seasonings are in. So what's next? What's next? I think the seasonings and mushrooms. Okay, so the mushrooms are here. We're gonna stick the mushrooms in. The peas, we're just using frozen peas. Uh, if the peas are still frozen when you pull them out of the freezer, you measure one cup. If your peas are thawed, it's about a half cup. So they kind of shrink as they thaw. Uh, so there's the mushrooms. Here's our peas. These are still frozen. So we have a cup here. And they will thaw in, in the dish as we stir it up. Yeah, come see what we're looking at now. Move all our trash out of here. You can actually see the good food. Now we need the tofu. Now for the tofu, you actually only have to put half of it in. So guess what? That means you get to eat the other half. Okay. Now if you like lots of tofu in it, you can put it all in if you want. But when Ann, Daniel and I tried it, we figured a half, about half a block was a perfect amount to mix in here so it's not overpowering. Doesn't that just make it so pretty and yellow? Mm -hmm. It's a one dish meal. You have your rice, you've got your protein, you've got your vegetables. So you've got a complete meal all in one dish. Serve it with a few raw veggies and you're all, uh, all set. So this just needs one minute to cook to get those, make sure those peas are fully thawed and cooked through, and then it's ready to serve. And that's it. That's done. So, I wanted to do one more thing. What time is it? I don't know. 6.41. 6.41. So. We have time. I want to do one more recipe while this is finishing. Um, so let's see. Let's clear all this off, and then we'll switch to the other. All right. So our next recipe is dessert. I mean, after all, if you're going to make Asian food, you got to make an Asian dessert, too. So I don't always get to do dessert. Thank you. But uh, my one minute is up here, so I'm going to stir this up. And then this is done. Wow, that looks so good. Macy, you should bring a bowl so we can put 
put some in a bowl. Can you bring two bowls? For my shepherd's you want glass bowls? Yes, something pretty. Well, I have bad news for you all. I did hungry, so uh, there may not be a whole lot of this left for you tomorrow. So. Oh, I'm making a fresh batch tomorrow. Oh. This is for us. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Just saying. So, where did we put our recipe? So, for the dessert, we're waiting for us to. I'm waiting for them to bring me a bowl. So, before I start the dessert, I want to try this. Alright. Can I try it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. 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 Yeah, I told you it's only it's only enough for two people if it's Daniel and I. The two of us sat down. We made this entire thing in one meal. All right, you want to try it? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, so I'll try it first. Yeah, you have. Not
Daniel's so quiet because he's over there eating. He's feeding his face now. All right, so here's our peanut butter. We're gonna put that in the bowl first. You're fine, you need to eat. I'm just, I'm just waiting for the dessert. <laughs> no, actually, I thought I threw it in. We're gonna ask my mom to pull a dessert out of the freezer. What? This, one, even this, this one has to be baked. You can't eat this one yet. You'd have to wait like an hour. Alright. <laughs> See, that's why I never cook. Because usually when I go in the kitchen, it's when I'm hungry. And I'm like, okay, I don't have time to make anything. Let me just pull something out and eat it. <laughs> Christina is so good. She takes such good care of me. She always has something I can pull out and eat. Because she cooked the, next, the day before or that morning. So. All right, so next, Gotta keep her I'm glad you liked me. Next thing we need is uh, sorghum molasses. <laughs> this is why I throw away the lids on these things. <laughs> yeah. So I need a half cup of sorghum molasses. I'm going to spray this measuring cup with some oil because that way the molasses will come out faster than molasses. Because I don't want to be a slow as molasses. All right, so here we go. Here's our half cup of sorghum. And it just falls right out quick as ever. Now, sorghum molasses is not blackstrap molasses. Sorghum molasses, look how clean that measuring cup is. You see that? There we go. Uh, sorghum molasses is not blackstrap molasses. It is uh, made from the sorghum plant, which grows here locally in Kentucky. Um, and they take the stalks, they juice them, they boil the juice down, and that is our molasses. So it's not the same. Blackstrap molasses um, actually comes from sugar. Uh, it's a byproduct of making sugar. Your white sugar has had the molasses taken out of it. Um, so let's see. I have sorghum molasses and peanut butter. I'm going to put a little salt in here. If uh, I think the salt is gone. I need my salt back, so I will put vanilla in. Uh, if your peanut butter is not salted, you will need more salt than the recipe calls for. Thank you. So I need a quarter teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of liquid vanilla. You can use powdered vanilla in this recipe, but I prefer the liquid uh, because it's uh, the powder needs a liquid to dissolve into. So we're just going to do liquid vanilla here. And we're going to mix these together. The spatula. Just kind of cream it together, the peanut butter and the sorghum molasses. See it here, all nice. All right, now that we got that all nicely mixed, we're gonna add the sugar. Uh, you do not wanna add sugar at the very beginning because if sugar gets over mixed, it will turn very, very hard. So to keep it soft, we're adding it later. So we need, you can use a quarter cup to a half a cup of sugar. Um, we tried it with a quarter cup and it was, it tasted good, but it was more like a breakfast bar. It was not sweet at all. So if you actually want dessert, you need a half cup. All right, there's our half cup of sugar. I think I got it too heaping. And we are going to gently mix this in, not stir it too much because the peanut butter will turn hard and we don't want that. So just gently incorporate that in a little bit. And now we're gonna add our last ingredients and that is uh, the sesame seeds and the shredded coconut. So we have, uh, we need three quarters of a cup of shredded coconut. Which is about that right there. And we need two cups of sesame seeds. And you wanna make sure that your shredded coconut is unsweetened. Otherwise, if you're using sweetened, you obviously want less sugar. And then we are going to put on some gloves. Of course, at home, you don't have to. But I do recommend spraying your hands with the, the oil spray and mixing with your fingers. 
Thank you, Mom. So we're going to just spray off our hand here. And we're just going to gently mix this. Mom thinks I'm being too gentle. She says you don't have to be this gentle. You can be mean to it after you add the sesame seeds and it won't turn hard. It will only turn hard before you add them in. That should be comforting. All right, we just about got it all incorporated in. I think I could eat that even without it being baked. <laughs> Me too. Well, it's actually edible raw. It's just not going to be a crunchy, chewy candy, um, but it's perfectly edible. You could just make this into bars and eat it like that. <laughs> okay. So now I've got these. I would totally have a hard time actually like letting the batch get all the way into the oven without eating part of it. <laughs> so we're going to take our dish. This is our uh, casserole dish that we're going to be baking it in. And uh, I like to put a tiny bit of spray on the bottom. But you can, you have two options. You can just spray the whole dish and, and press it in. Or you can use parchment paper. Um, we've discovered that it sticks the least if you put parchment paper in and then lightly spray the parchment paper. Uh, because it's, the sorghum batch is a lot more gooey than the honey batch. The batch with honey is um, doesn't stick near as bad, but uh, the sorghum batch is gooey, so this is your best uh, way to do that. And we're just going to take our spatula here and plop it into the pan, and we're just going to smash it into the pan. either one. Yeah, bring it in so you can see what I'm doing here. Sure. So, Daniel, are you going to tell us any health benefits about anything? Well, I was. It should, it should be on the printer. But both phones are busy, so I, I don't have my phone. It should be on the printer. Oh, we printed it for you. Oh, my nose right here. <laughs> Pages. Do I read it all? No. <laughs> Just give us a few minutes and then I'll finish telling about this. Well, you notice an ingredient that's common, obviously, in both of our both of our recipes here is the sesame seeds or the sesame oil in the in the other the other recipe. So obviously, um, why are we why are we doing this this cooking class? Not just to show you some good and tasty things to eat, although that's very important but how to eat healthy foods. And uh, sesame seeds is actually, as I was researching it, quite, uh, quite surprisingly uh, full of nutrition. Uh, here's just a, a little rundown, and I'm not used to doing this off of a, off a sheet of paper, but, <laughs> um, sorry, I have my mouth full, I was still eating that. So that's good, though. good, by the way. <laughs> but sesame seeds are an excellent source of your fiber, your dietary fiber. Um, there's two kinds of, or two ways that you can get your sesame seeds. One is with the holes on, and the other is with the holes off. If you get the sesame seeds, this, these all have the holes off, and in fact, most sesame seeds that, you will, that you'll be able to buy are already whole. They taste a whole lot better that way. They taste a lot better, and uh, generally, uh, I like to tell people, getting the food the way that it is grown, closer to the way that it's grown, is better for you and uh, without parts of the things removed. For example, we like 
whole wheat flour instead of white flour. We like brown rice instead of white rice. Um, things like that. I will say, although you can eat the sesame seeds both ways, the ones with the holes still on, the unholed sesame seeds, aren't necessarily better. And the reason is this, the holes actually contain um, Anti-nutrients. I forget that the the, uh, the, uh, the name the, the name of it. Not Exolytes and phytates. Exolytes and phytates, <laughs> which hamper your digestion of protein. So if you eat the sesame seeds with the holes still on, it's actually going to prevent your body from digesting the protein as well as it could. Now. <coughs> It's not gonna kill you. It's not to say it's bad for you, but it's just. It's just the virus. No, stop. <laughs> you just inhale the grain of rice. All right. If you get the virus, you're quarantined. I'm not going home. <laughs> okay. No virus today. Then. So. Anyway, the, the sesame seeds that we use are a, um, a good cold sesame seeds, a good source of fiber. They're also an excellent source of protein. That's where I was going with that discussion about whole versus not whole. Because, um, of course, you wouldn't think about it. You usually you think about your, your meat and your grain, things like that being a good source of protein. But uh, they're an excellent source of protein. They have, excuse me, <coughs> <laughs> the um, a lot of the argument against using plant-based proteins, like proteins from beans and grains and seeds, is because they're not a complete protein. That is, they have more of one uh, type of amino acid and less of some of the other types of amino acids. Now, uh, that is also true of sesame seeds. <clears throat> they are low in several amino acids, like lysine, a very low low in this amino acid. <coughs> But they are high in other amino acids, including some that are not found in as high quantities in your grains, such as rice. So for example, if you eat your rice and your soybeans and your sesame seeds together, you get a complete protein. And the levels of the amino acids balance each other out. So it's an excellent, excellent source of protein. But again, that uh, reinforces why we need to have a balanced diet. You don't eat just sesame seeds. I think you get sick of sesame seeds if that's all you ate. Uh, Sesame seeds help to lower your blood pressure. Uh, high blood pressure is a major risk factor for uh, heart disease and stroke. And uh, I was telling Christina the other day, if, if uh, people got as serious about reducing some of these diseases like cardiovascular disease and cancer as we are about this virus, I wonder, I wonder uh, what the world would be like. Maybe people would be healthier, I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> healthy bones. Sesame seeds have uh, a lot of uh, good nutrients, uh, including calcium, although the most of the calcium is in the hull. So here again, if you eat the unhulled sesame seeds, you're going to get more of the calcium. But still, either way, they're very good for your, for your bones. Um, actually, not just calcium, but calcium, magnesium, manganese, and zinc. Um, which, zinc. There's a lot of talk about zinc because if zinc helps to boost your immune system. And right now, you can get uh, you can use all that you can get, <laughs> and, and probably may, maybe more. Uh, sesame seeds are great at reducing inflammation, and there's some studies that are referenced here. Uh, people with kidney disease ate a mixture of 18 grams of flax seed, uh, pumpkin seeds, and I'm missing something on my page. Um, flax seed, pumpkin seed, and sesame seeds, and they had a significantly reduced risk uh, or significantly reduced inflammation markers. And I'm not seeing the percentages here. Is he missing something? No, it's there. It's all right. We'll get through this. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip on through this because we don't have all day. Um, diabetes. Uh, sesame seeds help to control your blood sugar. And again, one of the major factors there is the fiber because anything that adds fiber to your diet is going to uh, help to regulate that blood sugar. 
going in and out. And there's some some uh, other information. I'll put the link to this uh, thing in the in the comments. You can go go and read this later. So tell me one more good thing about sesame seeds. They taste good. <laughs> <laughs> they're good for you and they taste good. What, <laughs> there you what, go. What, what's, your, what's your thought? Is that what you're getting at? No. So. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Now I want to eat some more sesame seeds. Now growing up, I hated sesame seeds. And the only way I liked them is when my mom made these sesame bars. Um, but we've got it all smashed in now into our casserole dish. We have to cut it and then it will be baked. Um, and when you bake, you want to preheat the oven uh, to 350 degrees, but you're gonna bake it at 300. Now, most candy recipes, you know, you mix the, the sugar on the stove, you bring it to the right temperature, boil it, whatever, and mix your stuff in and let it candy. This saves you all those steps. You don't have to stir anything on the stove. You don't have to have a thermometer. You just simply mix the ingredients, stick it in the pan, and bake it in the oven, and it candies in the oven. Uh, so much easier. So we're going to take uh, my knife and I'm going to spray it with oil so it doesn't stick so bad. And we're just going to score this into bars. And you can do any size of bar you want. Um, you can do small ones, you can do big ones. Um, and uh, once these are scored, we are going to bake them in the oven for how long, Daniel? How long? Uh, on there. On our... Tell me. Recipe here, bake 300 for 15 minutes, turn the pan around. Bake 300 for another 15 minutes. So basically you're gonna bake it 30 minutes, but you wanna turn the pan around because no oven bakes evenly. And uh, so that way you can get it even on both sides. You wanna bake it until it's golden, and then uh, you're gonna take it out of the oven, and how long are you gonna let it cool in the pan, Daniel? 30 minutes, cool 30 minutes. So we're gonna cool 30 minutes, and then you're gonna very carefully Take it out of the pan and put it on cooling rack and okay. then let it finish cooling completely. Do you think they will survive on the cooling rack? Not with like you around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> around here they do. So once we take this and we put it in the oven and we let it cool and it cools off and everything, then we have these beautiful sesame bars. Mm. Yes, you may have one. They're cold. We just pull it out of the freezer. Air cold. <laughs> it's very well chilled. <laughs> it's frozen. <laughs> if you can eat it out of the freezer, you can eat it any way you want. But uh, okay. I don't know if you can, you can put that up closer so they can see it. I can't walk. You can. There you go. Yum, yum. And uh, depending on how you make them, you can make them chewy or you can make them crunchy, uh, depending on your ratio of wet to dry. So if, you want, if it's too chewy for you and you want it drier, you can increase the shredded coconut by about a quarter cup, and that will make it more crunchy. Um, if you want them more chewy, then you decrease the shredded coconut by a quarter cup, um, and that will give it more chew. So you can adjust it how you like it. Uh, it's very simple, it's a lot of fun. And the nice thing about it is they keep beautifully. You can put them in the freezer, they'll keep for a long time. Uh, they're great for trips. Uh, you're going on vacation, they're great for camping uh, because they don't have to like be refrigerated. Um, so there's uh, all so many ways you can enjoy them. And of course, they may not last till your next camping trip. You might need them all tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you have had as much fun as we have. You've had fun, right? Yeah. Now he's got a mouthful. Really <laughs> <laughs> he's got a mouthful and you got sesame seeds all over your face. That's all right. <laughs> So, uh, would you mind closing us out with a word of prayer? Sure. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to share this class. And I pray that you will bless each one who is watching and uh, be with them until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I don't know what we'll be doing next month or how things will go, but watch our Facebook page and we'll keep you posted. And until next time, have a great evening. God bless. <laughs>